In this video, we will talk about the concepts behind current, voltage, and resistance. In particular, we will talk about the origin and the definition of electric current and how the application of voltage or potential difference produces electric current in a given circuit. Next, we will talk about the concept of a resistance and how resistance depends on things such as resistivity, which is material specific, and the dimensions of a given conductor. Finally, we will do some solved problems based on these concepts. Let's first begin with the origin and definition of electric current. Let's assume you have a conductor like that. And within that conductor, you have lots of positive charges. Let's just show three of them for the sake of the argument. And each of these charges carry charge of Q coulombs, little Q coulombs. Of course, these charges do not stay put, which means they are not completely stationary. What they do is they move randomly like that. And on average, they end up where they began. So there is no net motion for these charges within that conductor. Now, let's assume that I connect this conductor with a battery, like that. So we all know the longer line refers to the positively charged terminal of the battery, and the shorter line is the negative terminal of the battery. So let's assume the battery provides a potential difference of capital V. What that means is the left-hand side of the conductor has a potential of, let's say, V plus, and the right-hand side of that conductor will have a potential, electric potential, V minus, where V plus minus V minus equals the potential provided by the battery, or the potential difference provided by the battery. Since this region has a greater potential than that region, an electric field will be set up like that towards the right. Let's call it E. Then what happens is that all the charges, the collection of these positive charges, will start to drift with some speed or velocity V. Now, the velocity V results from net motion of this collection of positive charges. And this velocity is called the drift velocity. Let's concentrate on one particular cross-sectional area, like that. The cross-sectional area is A meter squared with the length of, let's say, dx. Let's assume, in an interval delta t seconds, a total net charge of delta plus q passes through this area. So the electric current is defined in a following manner. It is given as the ratio of delta q over delta t. So electric current is defined as the net charge flowing through the area per unit time. As you can see, the SI unit for electric current is coulomb per second. Delta Q is measured in coulomb, delta T is measured in seconds. Or quite simply, ampere. With an abbreviation, capital A. This is the general definition of electric current. Now let's get the, an expression for electric current in terms of microscopic quantities. Let's assume within this conductor there are n charges per unit volume. n charges per unit volume. Since each charge carries Q coulomb, little Q coulomb, the net 
charge, the net coulomb that is passing through such a cross-sectional area has a got to be the number of charges per unit volume times Q times the volume of such small element, which in this case is the cross-sectional area times the width, which is, let's say, dx. Note again, little n has the dimensions of a number of charges per unit volume, and this is the volume. So the volume cancels will give you a number of charges, number of carriers, and each carrier has a charge of little q coulomb. So when you multiply the number of charges and the charge each carries, you will get the net charge that is passing through such a cross-sectional area in this amount of time, namely delta t. Of course, we can write delta q as differential q in the language of calculus, and we see that the electric current can be expressed as follows, n q a dx over dt. But we do know what dx dt is. dx dt is quite simply the drift speed. So in terms of these microscopic quantities, the number of carriers per unit volume and drift speed, it quite simply becomes n q a v. Note that electric current is a scalar quantity. Another quantity that is of calculational importance is the electric current density. Now this is a vector and it's defined as quite simply, at least the magnitude of it is defined as the electric current in coulomb per second or in ampere divided by the cross-sectional area. So from this equation, the magnitude of electric current density is given by NQV. We note that electric current density is a vector and that can be seen from this equation. The right hand side you have a drift velocity vector so electric current density is a vector as well. And the unit for electric current density is ampere per meter squared. Now we also note that since these two points are at different potentials, there will be an electric field going to the right as we indicated earlier. Now this electric field is a vector. So there is a direct connection between J, the electric current density, and the electric field that is being set up within the conductor. For some materials, especially metals, J is directly proportional to the electric field E. With the constant of proportionality can be written in the following manner. So the constant of proportionality is 1 over rho. So this rho here is known as the resistivity of that conductor or metal. Since J is related to electric current, and E is related to the potential difference provided by this battery, we can also write a proportionality equation between these two quantities in the following manner. I equals 1 over R times V, where now R is the resistance of this conductor. Now there is a difference between resistance and resistivity. This will become clear in a few minutes. These Two equations are known as Ohm's law and material or conductors that obey Ohm's law are known as ohmic materials. Now let's look at the connection between resistivity and resistance. To begin with, resistance has an SI unit of ohm and resistivity has an SI unit of ohm meter. So if you have a conductor, let's say like that, with cross-sectional area a meter squared and a length capital L and the resistivity that makes up this material is rho ohm meter, 
than the resistance imposed by this material is quite simply given by the resistivity times the length of the material divided by the cross-sectional area of that material or the conductor. Resistivity is material-specific. For example, resistivity for aluminum is about 2.6 times 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter. If you're talking about copper, the resistivity is about 1.7 times 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter, and so on. Let's look at the following problem. A wire has a diameter of 1.04 mm. It carries a constant current of 2 ampere. The density of electrons is 8.5 times 10 to the power 28 electrons per cubic meter. That is the little n that we talked about before. Find the magnitude of the current density and also the magnitude of the drift velocity of the electrons. The magnitude of the current density J is quite simply the current in ampere divided by the cross-sectional area of that wire. The current is 2 ampere. The cross-sectional area, the circular cross-sectional area of this wire is pi radius squared. So pi we know the diameter is 1.04 mm. Divide by 2 it will give you radius. And let's not forget to convert that into meter. We're multiplying it with 10 to the power minus 3 and square that. And this will give you 2.35 times 10 to the power 6 ampere over meter squared. Part B. What is the magnitude of the drift velocity? The electric current density in terms of drift velocity is given by this equation. The vector equation goes like that. Since the magnitude of J has been determined, which is 2.35 times 10 to the power 6, N is the density of electrons, which was given to be 8.5 times 10 to the power 28. And the charge of each electron is 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 times the magnitude of that drift velocity, from which we can determine the magnitude of the drift velocity to be 1.72 times 10 to the power minus 4 meter per second. So this is a typical order for drift, the magnitude of the drift velocity. Problem 2. A copper wire with cross-sectional area of 8.2 times 10 to the power minus 7 meters squared carries a current of 1.5 ampere. Find the electric field within the wire, the potential difference between the two points 50 meter apart, the resistance of a 50 meter length of this copper wire given the resistivity of copper to be like that. Now, since this is a copper wire, we can assume that it follows Ohm's law, which we have outlined before, and that is Ohm's law. The electric field can be determined from this expression to be like that. And since J is quite simply the electric current divided by the cross-sectional area, we have everything that we need to determine the electric field. So since we know the resistivity, which is 1.72 times 10 to the power minus 8, the electric current was 1.5 ampere, and the cross-sectional area is given to be 8.2 times 10 to the power minus 7. And that's going to give you 0 0.0315 volt per meter for the electric field. Part B, potential difference between two points 50 meter apart. Now, potential difference is given by the product of electric field times the distance, meaning if you have a wire with length d, the electric field within the wire is e, the potential difference between the n is given by that equation. So electric field is 0 0.0315, the distance is 50 meters, and that's going to give you 1.575 for the potential difference in the unit of volt. Part C, the resistance. Resistance is given by the resistivity times the length of the material over the cross-sectional area of the material. We know all three, and putting all the information here, we get 1.05 ohm for the resistance. And that solves the problem.
Thank you for watching.